Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video I want to go over using the row span and call span attributes when you're working with tables. Jump over to my editor. So my editor of choice, Notepad++, and I've already got a, a basic little page here set up. I've got the doc type definition for HTML5, head section with title and meta character encoding. Let me go ahead and add language attribute up here. English language. I've got a little internal style set up and I've already got a reset rule. And then in the body of the page I simply have a headline. So I'll go ahead and save this. I'll take a moment to zoom in on my text. And if you check this out in my browser, here it is. Refresh and let me go ahead and zoom in on this also. Make that nice and big. This is my page as it stands now. So in my previous video, or my, or I've got an earlier video, I'm just making a basic table. They're not too tough to do. So let me go ahead and put together another quick table. So I start off with a set of table tags. There we go. And by the way, there's also a, a, a legend tag you can. And there also is a caption tag that could I could put right in here. that's really the only element that you would put within the table tags that's not contained within a row or cell. Okay, and let me just go ahead and create a simple uh, three by three table. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a row. And within that row, I'll have a set of cells. And then I will copy this row a few times. So now we've got ourselves a little grid. One, two, and three, six. There we go. So we have a three by three table. I've got a set of table tags that contains everything. I've got three rows, and within each of my rows, I have three cells. So if I save this, jump back over to my browser, and refresh, now we can kind of see how things are looking. You might be thinking, wow, that's a pretty lame table. Let's go ahead and jazz it up just a little bit here. And for that, we'll use some styles. So I do have a table now. I'll put a border on there. It's a light blue. Go ahead and pause there for a second. And let's go ahead and work on our uh, table data tags, which are cells. And I'll set the width of those to be um, 200 pixels each. And I'll put a little border on there, too. Put them as red so they really stand out. Just go ahead and center the contents within those cells. So now, when I head back over to my browser and refresh, now you can sort of say, wow, OK, now that table's really looking like something. OK. So those are my table cells. And I'm actually a little surprised that they're as wide as that. Let me jump back over to my CSS real quick. Because I've only got, oh, that's right, I forgot I was zoomed in. That's right. Um, I was saying, wait, that looks like more than 200 pixels. But I recall I did zoom in on my web page when I first started up. OK, so here's my table. And you can see my caption text right up there at the top. And my tables right over here. See, it's pushed up against the edge. That's because I've got that reset rule. But that's OK. But I could always fix that with a little bit of, I could do a little bit of margin, 10 pixels. All right, so what I want to focus on in this particular video, though, is row span or call span. And what I want to have happen now is I want my first cell to kind of take up two columns, OK? And then I want my third cell to take up two rows. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pause my screen. I'm going to do the work. And then I'm going to kind of explain what I do, because I want to see if you can kind of figure this out. So I'm going to go ahead and pause here for a moment. There we go. So I've just made a couple quick changes. So now you can see that my first cell is clearly taking up two columns. There's one column right here, and there's another column right here. And my first cell is taking up two of those columns, whereas cell three is taking up two rows. 
you notice it's taking up where row one is and it's also taking up where row two is. So two columns and two rows. Notice that cell two and cell six are now missing because cell one used to be over here and cell two is right here, but cell one is taking over that space. I had to, had to delete those cells. Let's look at my HTML. Cell one now has the call span attribute and I'm doing call span equals two and that's taking up two columns. And then cell three has row span equals two because I want to take up two rows. Now I'm going to press my control Z to undo. See I deleted cell six and I'm going to press control Z again. There's my row span is gone and I deleted cell two. So right now all I have is call span equals two but I still have cells two and three, four, five, and six. Let's see what's happened now. There we go. So cell one is spanning two columns, but because I didn't delete cell two, it's pushing everything out. Yes, I could also delete cell three to fix that. So I could delete cell three up there and that would also take care of it. So simply delete, save, and refresh. Okay, so that's a little bit about row span or call span. Now to see if you're really getting this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop my recorder here. I'm going to create another table layout that has some weird and wacky row span call spans. And then I want to kind of see if you can figure out where I'm using row span, where I'm using call span, and what those numbers might be. Okay, what do you think of this one? Now when I used to teach uh, tables more often in class, I used to always challenge students, challenge the class. Basically, I'd, I'd put up a bunch of table designs, very similar in this structure, but they wouldn't be numbered like this, and I'd ask us a, a set of questions about every table. I'd ask how many rows are in the table and how many cells are in each row. And then I would ask questions like how many cells are using a row span attribute? how many cells are using a call span attribute. So basically they'd have all these tables to look at and just by looking at the table you'd have to determine how many cells are using row span, call span, how many rows are there, how many cells are in each row. So I've got these um, these cells here and you know just to help emphasize it I'm gonna jump over my code real quick so don't look. I don't want you to look at that yet. And let me put a little bit of height in here. Just want to make these a little bit taller, a little bit more robust. There we go. So first, I think is the easiest question, is how many rows does this particular table have? Oh, and by the way, when I did this, I sketched it out on pen and paper first. I think that's a great way. When you're doing a complicated table design, I think it's good to sketch it out on pen and paper, and then you can look at it and say, okay, that's what I'm going to go for. So for the number of rows, there's one row two rows, three rows, four rows. So this particular table has four rows, which means you know that there's four sets of TR tags. Okay, next question is also very easy. How many cells are in the first row? Easy answer. There's only one cell in the first row, and it's a big one. Here's a tougher one. How many cells are in the second row? What do you think? One, two? What do you consider the second row? Is the second row this entire chunk right here? Or is the second row just up here? Okay. There are two cells in the second row. What about the third row? How many cells are in the third row? One, two, three, four? There's only one cell in the third row. So if I look at the third row, there's only one cell. And that one cell is cell number four. In the fourth row, there are only two cells, cells five and six. What about, why aren't there three? Well, cell two has already been counted. Cell two is in our second row. So it's kind of weird to think about. Where are the cells? How you know Which row contains which cells? And the trick to this, by the way, that I would tell people in class is that literally, if you've got this in pen and paper, but put a dot at the top left corner of each cell. 
and the dots will tell you the number of rows and the number of cells within each row. So all you have to do is imagine those dots right there in the top left corner of each cell. And that will let you know the number of cells per row. My first cell up here at the top is spanning multiple columns, but it's not taking up multiple rows. So this particular, this big cell right up here at the top, cell number one, it is call span equals three. It's spanning three columns. Cell number two is row span equals three. It's taking up three rows. Cell number three is call span equals two. Cell number four is call span equals two. Cells five and six, perfectly normal. Each one is taking up one column and one row. So if I look at this on the HTML side of things, here we go. Cell one, the big one growing across the top, call span equals three. My second row, row span equals three, call span equals two. Row span equals three, call span equals two. There's cell four, call span equals two. Cells five and six are neither row span nor call span. All right, so that's a little bit about using row span and call span. And you can use that to make some rather complicated table layouts. Keep in mind, though, this isn't done as much as it used to. Um, we used to make much more complicated tables when we were doing web design, but now we're using divs and floats and sections and things like that. So tables are really just for tables purposes. Have fun with this.